I'm a teacher, and I do not value education. And neither should you. If we really want to support students, we need to stop educating them. Instead, we need to focus on getting students connected, connected to ideas, communities, and maybe most importantly, themselves. And community colleges like Shasta is where this is happening. Did you know there's over 1,100 community colleges in the U.S. today, serving close to 13 million students? Just for some perspective, there's only four states in the country with a population larger than that. Talk about a voting block. In fact, I'm kind of curious. Raise your hand if you went to a community college. Okay, keep them up. Now raise your hand if you know someone that went to a community college. Look around. These are huge numbers of people whose lives have in some way been shaped by a system of higher education that, let's be honest, gets a pretty bad rap. Community colleges are often thought of as places of last resort, places to hang out for any lack of anything better to do for those high school screw-ups. I've even heard people say that they're not real colleges, that somehow it's not a real degree. In fact, getting ready for today, I looked up and call, uh, talks on community colleges, and guess how many I found? Yeah, zero. We're not even important enough to talk about. That's ridiculous. Community colleges, the largest system of higher education on the planet, connect to and serve our most important, and I would argue most undervalued asset, you, and you, and you. Colleges like Shasta are today creating spaces that allow students to contribute in ways that benefit all of us, seriously. Imagine a world without Mickey Mouse, Luke Skywalker, iPhones, or women in outer space. Yeah, all the people responsible for these, community college graduates. Our very own Judge Tamara Wood, a recently appointed Shasta County Superior Court judge, a Shasta College graduate. I've had the absolute privilege for over a decade of being the sociology professor at Shasta College, and during that time, my students, not me, have served the role of teacher. From them, I've learned that what really matters in their lives didn't come from education. It came from who and what they were connected to while students. Students like Christina, who connected to a concept in my class that changed her life or my student Mike, a man thrown off the rails by our recession in 2008, connected to probably the most important thing while at Shasta, himself. And in reflecting on students like them and so many others, it occurred to me that that's what saved me, a first-generation college student from a single wide trailer just a few miles up the road to the college professor standing here today. It wasn't my education. It was my connection to my education that got me here. So my goal today is to convince you of the transformative power of community colleges, from places of last resort to institutions at the forefront of innovation, inspiration, and social change. By the end of my talk today, you'll be convinced that community colleges aren't places to end up, but the places to be. Consider Christina, a former student of mine a young, slight woman from a working-class immigrant family in a town that even by our rural standards was pretty much in the boonies. Christina was the first person in her family to go to college. The fact that she was enrolled in my interjection to sociology class was kind of a statistical miracle. Unfortunately for her, however, she ended up in my very first class as a new teacher. Yeah, there I was, this fresh-faced, obnoxiously optimistic professor who only the week before, with quite some ceremony, I'd retired my grungy grad school backpack and bought an adult briefcase. Now, it was a purple briefcase, but it was still a briefcase. And I remember, I worked so hard, I read articles and books on the art of educating, and I'm pretty sure I haven't worked out that hard on anything since, come to think about it. And... She didn't get it, right? I, edu I lectured, I quizzed, I PowerPointed, not even sure that's a verb, and they didn't get it. Mercifully, the semester finally ended, and both my su students and my uh, myself were a bit disenchanted, to say the least. Thankfully, a winter break, some rainy hikes, and I will admit, a glass of wine or two later, it hit me. These students had been educated their entire lives. 
But because the force is so much bigger than them, racism, sexism, poverty, politics, they came to me, they came to college disconnected. And teaching them in this traditional educational way was actually making things worse. I could educate until the cows come home, and where I live, you can actually watch the cows come home. And, and these students weren't going to get it, not because they weren't smart, but because through this process of educating, they were being reminded yet again that they were lacking in some way, that they weren't agents of their own futures. Something had to change. So let's look at this verb, to educate. What does it mean? To give intellectual, moral, or social instruction. What's wrong with educating? Well, two things. One, when you're being educated, you are by definition a passive learner, devoid of knowledge in your own right. What you bring to the table, your experience, your expertise, isn't valued. Two, educating creates a hierarchy with teachers on the top and students on the bottom. The verb demands that the student's lacking in some way. I mean, how open are you to new ideas, new information, when you're made to feel less than? Me, not so much. And this persistent focus on educating is especially dangerous at community colleges because we only accept the top 100% of applicants. <laughs> Our students can come from communities that have been structurally disconnected from society's resources like education, politics, and social change. And this is not only their problem, it's our problem. We, society, suffer when they're not given an opportunity to contribute. Imagine a world, I don't want to live in a world without female astronauts, female judges, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, seriously. So, back to Christina. Probably against her own better judgment, she signed up for my Sociology of Gender class a few semesters later. But this time, instead of lectures and quizzes, I had my students participate in service learning projects where I asked them to connect class material to work in a, a nonprofit here in the community. Many of you, probably, in fact. And I remember in my office talking with Christina about possible service sites, and she mentioned she was interested in working with survivors of sexual assault. Later, from her story, I learned that Christina not only had to overcome economic and racial barriers to becoming a college student, Christina was a rape survivor. I distinctly remember her sitting there, clutching her cold latte, sharing the violence and the trauma done to her as a young child. Anning her tissue after tissue, I was struck not only by the violence that she was sharing, but by the, how she kept focusing on the things that she should have done to keep this from happening, and how alone she felt as a survivor. Here was this young woman sitting across from me that was, in so many ways, disconnected. This gave me an idea. Remember that concept I was struggling with trying to get our students to think about the sociological imagination? I encouraged her to revisit in it in her work with a local women's nonprofit. A few weeks later, I'm in my office grading their reflection assignments, and I came across Christina's, and I wanted to share it with you. She wrote, It was powerful to talk to these women to, and explain how this whole thing, sexism, discrimination, is so much bigger than me that it's a system that's broken, not them. Nothing they did or do will ever justify being treated unequally. That really, if we want to deal with domestic violence and sexual assault, we've got to deal with gender discrimination. That was it. That's what I've been trying so long to educate her about, this idea that individuals and society are interconnected, that these forces together shape our experiences. But Christina didn't get it from being educated. She got it because she was provided a space to connect with this concept and to connect with it on her own terms. So what does this word connect mean? To join together so as to provide access and communication. Why are colleges like Shasta shifting from educating to connecting? Well, one, connection allows agency in the learning process. Christina played an active role in connecting to this concept. Two, connection recognizes and respects a diversity of knowledge. It values the experiences students bring with them. And three, connection erases this hierarchy between students and teachers. Christina got this concept because she connected with people, not from a professor that gave her something she was assumed not to have. 
And here's an example of community colleges doing exactly what they should, create space and support for students to connect to ideas that benefit all of us. Or take my student Mike, like so many others. He, this young 30-year-old man felt the ground shift underneath him during the recession in 2008. With construction jobs drying up, he decided to go back to college, and I can still remember him awkwardly trying to fold his long legs under our tiny little desk. Mike was not only physically uncomfortable at school, he was uncomfortable with the idea of college. He would come by and confidently express his lack of confidence in writing and test-taking and being a student in general. He shared a story of growing up in a family with drug abuse, domestic violence, divorce, and these experiences not only undermined his skills as a student, they were keeping him from seeing himself as a student. Mike was struggling trying to connect these seemingly disconnected identities, and this was a problem. Because of my success with Christina, I decided to have Mike's class explore this other concept, social inequality, by observing the work of social service programs in our community, and Mike chose to work with young men on probation. Near the end of the semester, he made a point of asking me to look over his essay to see if he was on the right track. Here's part of what he wrote. I struggled for the first year or two at college trying to figure out how to fit in. I didn't belong here. People talked differently, acted different. I didn't seem to fit. Working with these kids, though, helped me see the connection between who I am and who I want to be. The class project helped me see how my education connects to something real. What do you think? Was he on the right track? Yeah. Students like Christina and Mike succeeded in my class not because they were being educated, but because they were both provided spaces to connect to material, and in Mike's case, to connect to his identity as a student. Mike succeeded not in spite of, but because of who he was. He went on to graduate with honors and was recently hired as a social worker right here in Shasta County. His success is our success. Our community is a better place because of him. Okay, so what? Why does all this feel-good stuff matter? Why should we stop educating and start connecting? Because we risk failing to do our job as an institution of higher education, which is to support students' civic and economic engagement in society. We all risk losing out on those ideas, those things, those people that are going to make our lives better. Christina and Mike and students like them inspired us at Shasta College. Conversations in classrooms, office hours, crowded hallways led to committee meetings and board discussions, which led to real changes in how we support students. Today, your community college is absolutely committed to creating spaces that allow students to connect. We've been busy. Programs like Step Up that connect people in prison to college classrooms. Leadership High School, where we take today's teens and mold them to be tomorrow's movers and shakers. Or Gateway to College, where we have students at risk of failing high school instead go to college. Or New, Non-Traditional Employment for Women, a program designed to encourage women to consider those man jobs like welding and heavy equipment because there's real money in those jobs in our community. Or my program, Civic and Community Engagement, where we've connected almost 200 students with over 30 businesses and nonprofits through internships and service learning projects. So that's what we've been up to. What about you? What are you doing to nurture connections that inspire our community? Well, if you're a business owner or a service provider, connect to students, not only for their futures, but yours. If you're a student, connect with those people that are going to connect you with those people to grow your networks. And if you're a teacher, stop educating. Instead, think about Christina, Mike. Think about those people, those ideas that you're connected to that made you the asset that you are today. And all of you. We need all of you to help us change the conversation from community colleges as places of last resort to institutions of innovation, inspiration, and social change. Places that connect and thus inspire and nurture our community's most important asset. All of you. Thank you. <laughs>